Well, look, you look nice tonight. Oh, thank you. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. How are you feeling? Um, well, I was puking blood. Yeah. Which is, you have to admit, that's pretty hardcore. That's pretty... That is metal as fuck, baby! I wouldn't consider that a life goal. Well, you know, we all go through life in our own ways. Some okay. of us aspire to, you know, higher learning. Some of us aspire to greatness. Some of us aspire to just fucking puke blood. I don't know anyone who's ever aspired to puke blood. Ozzy Osbourne. I personally aspire <laughs> to puke blood. Well, that's the difference between you and Ozzy Osbourne. I get through my whole life without ever puking blood. I'm gonna be pretty happy about that. You haven't lived until you. Yeah, I have. I've. <laughs> I had a bleeding ulcer flare up this weekend, which was not fun. No, I imagine not. Like I was a whiny bitch all yesterday and today because I have a head cold. That's much less bad. I woke up and there was a goose screaming at me and I started throwing up blood. I, th I thought I was under like a gypsy curse or something. Does the goose have something to do with? Well, you see, I woke up. I was woken up because I live in Illinois. Is a hole in your stomach or something? I, see, I live in Illinois. And it's that time of the year where the geese are going back to Canada. And Illinois is kind of a stopover. So I wake up and the... I'm like... <laughs> What the fuck? Ha! And I get up and I look out my window and there's a goose outside. Five in the morning on a Sunday. No one is bothering it. Nothing is going on. It's just a goose. It's got the lawn all to itself. It's just hanging out. And what? It, ha! 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 And I'm like, it's a gooster. And I had two options. One. I could get out of bed, put on clothing, and go downstairs on a Sunday morning to do battle with a goose. Or the other option was I could get back in bed and tweet about it. So <laughs> I got back in bed and tweeted about this fucking goose. And as I was doing so, my stomach started saying, hey, Hey, guess what? We're going to go do a thing. Hey, my boy, fuck you. I, I, I don't want to do a thing. We're going to go do a thing. No, I'm in bed. Ha! Shut up, Moose. Shut up. I don't want to do a thing. You're going to do a thing. So I went to the bathroom and I did the... Oh! It was like metalocalypse going on in there. Oh! Outside, I'm like, I've been, coo I've been cursed by a gypsy. Is my own... A lot of mornings with a little tiny cat face pressed against my face, and then as soon as I open my eyes, she goes, Wow! Surprise! Hey, sweetie. No, I, I, was, I was like, I made a gypsy angry, is what I thought happened. Because there's a goose waking me up, and I'm puking blood, and I'm like, this is like thinner too or something. <laughs> I just don't know where the where the goose fits in. I don't know either. To that particular curse. Shall be awoken by a goose and then heave blood. It's an old gypsy curse. Is that like you know? You will betray me after the cock crows on the third for the third time. After the goose honks for the third time, your guts will betray you. Maybe. 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 Anyway. Well, that, that, that actually, you know, honestly, considering some of the stories we had, the thing with the goose, not the most eventful wildlife related thing I've, I've seen on in the past week. We, we've got a lot of variative stuff and, and surprisingly, disappointingly, some of this came from people who, you know, really, really really should know better. Like, completely should fucking know better. 
in in like a scary way. Let me get the intro going. I have an interesting life. Intro. Intro. There we go. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interweb, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong With You? Now, this first one, there really isn't much of a story here. So I'm just, I'm just going to play the, this is a quick one. I could not resist because in terms of, of, yeah, th this this was was special. I'm just gonna play the video here. Where is the video? I had the video. No, where is the video? I fucking had this. Where did you go? God damn it! Live, everyone. Live shenanigans. Live on the air. Things Talk amongst aren't... yourselves. Ah, get off my screen. No. Well, I can edit this bit out later. No one will notice. They totally won't notice. Maybe the goose honked at such a frequency <sighs> that it caused your bleeding ulcer. Goose! Maybe that was like a superpowered mutant goose, and the goose honked at such a frequency as to tear a hole in your stomach. Um, I, I, there is actually an article to accompany this, but first, I'll just I'll just give you the video, Tara because you can see for yourself. Um, there are parts of uh, uh, the world right now that have kind of a monkey invasion. I'm not even saying that, you know, jokingly. They have these this problem where monkeys, wild fucking monkeys, are crawling into the fucking city and just taking over places. Well, I know that's been an ongoing problem in india i used to work with a girl from india and she said it was a huge problem living there yeah, and this is this is probably not how you should like handle it literally murdered the man oh oh yeah if you watch here carefully this dude goes up gives the monkey the finger and gets drop kicked in the face <gasps> oh my holy monkey Shall we see that again? Let's 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 have let's give that one another look. There you go. Dude's walking by. This is like a storefront. There's a monkey. Dude fucks with the monkey. Flips him up. Boom! Right. Oh. Oh. Why would you why would you fuck? Don't don't do that to the monkey. Yeah, apparently monkey took that very personally. And this was actually and I I'm I'm playing because this is actually a news story about this. And I'm like, what's slow the... news day, huh? Yeah. What more is there to say, really, other than don't fuck with monkeys? <laughs> Leave monkey alone. I just I had to share that. Anyway. Bathroom monkey hate clean. <laughs> so, when you think of a car, what do you think of as a primary requirement for a vehicle? Tires. There you go. Brakes. Yes. Engine. Uh huh. Steering apparatus. Yep. Cup holders. No, well, it's not a requirement, but. Uh, it is. You need somewhere to put your Pepsi. You know what you didn't mention that you probably should have? Doors. Oh, well, there's those Jeeps that don't have doors. Yeah, but this looks kind of... It's always freaking me out. Like, I don't understand why you would get in a Jeep without doors. Seems unsafe. Well, apparently he put everything in there except the fucking doors. An Ontario man in his 60s is facing several charges after being pulled over while driving a van without doors, windows, and license plates. And if you look at the back of the thing there, he just sort of said the fuck with it and oh and and put like you know an emergency sign on there and sort of like said eh, they'll get the idea police were monitoring traffic when an officer's attention was drawn to an unplated green 2000 dodge caravan as the vehicle approached the officer noticed it had no sliding side doors the rear windows were missing and several items were sticking out of the open doors a wooden stool was strapped to the van's roof and a triangular, slow-moving vehicle sign 
was tied across the back of the van where the license plate should have been. Police stopped the vehicle and said its 66-year-old driver told them his license was suspended. There was also no insurance on the van. So. I've, I've done this. Drove without license? I was pulled over an unregistered car with no insurance on a suspended license. An hour from my home. Yeah, but the thing. To get a haircut. <laughs> yeah, but the thing was. Just let me go. Yeah, but the thing with that is your car had windows and doors. Yeah, but that's still really illegal. Like, it's illegal. Me. But basically, the guy gave me a court summons and was like, fix it and don't drive, get a ride home. But when in this case, the guy isn't, he's like, if I had no registration, no license, no insurance, I would try to drive as inconspicuously as fucking possible. Yeah, I was trying to be really like, you don't fill your fill your car full of shit and then rip the doors off. <laughs> it's like this guy's like, they'll never know. No one will pay any attention. Like you just you ran out of fucks a long time ago. Yeah, you pretty much did. They probably fell out the back of the sliding door. Speaking of not giving a fuck, um, we've had so many of these stories. And and I'm again, I hate when I have to start start a story like this. No one was seriously injured. We've had, what was it a while back that, uh, was it the bus driver or the teacher stole the kid's lunch? Was like steal. Per, the bus driver. The was bus driver. Kids. Was stealing the kid's lunch for like a month or something. Well, and we at the time were like, this this person's going to hell. They're the worst fucking bus driver in the world. The internet looked upon us and said, challenge accepted. I say the nay. School bus carrying 44 Howard Company students run off the road, driver faces charges. Howard County Police says school bus drivers accused of driving while impaired after running off the road Tuesday <laughs> afternoon on Whiskey Bottom Road. That's not instructions. Um, That's not like a requirement to drive that road. <laughs> it's like, Whiskey Bottom? Okay, kids, hold on. No, I gotta drink the whiskey to the bottom. It says so. <laughs> we'll be fine. It's the law. Police called the scene, and the driver, 33-year-old Stacy Jean McKinney, uh, was arrested. She faces multiple charges, including driving while impaired, drug possession, and awesome. negligent driving. Do they not do background checks for school bus drivers? Drug possession on it the... It should be a thing. I yeah. feel like if they're transporting children, there should be a background check. I've had background checks for every retail job I've ever worked. Yeah, they're strict about that shit. And I don't have children's lives in my hands. Well, she apparently... No fucks given. None, none asked, none given. I mean, like... The bus driver from The Simpsons always seemed like a stoner. Yeah, but I don't think Otto was actually fucked up while driving. He was just kind of dumb. He was just kind of dumb and weird. Yeah. This is just... Uh... Lady. Your job is... To, you have... It's twofold. You were supposed to drive the bus. You were supposed to not be drunk. That's it. That's all. That's all you got to do. Well. What? Pretty much don't do anything that's going to maybe accidentally kill the children. Well, if it's an accident. No. But you try really hard to avoid those things. I do love how she, court documents say McKinney told police she wasn't able to stop the bus because the brakes failed. Uh-huh. And what does that have to do with the cocaine? Well, the brakes failed because the cocaine slipped under the brake. <laughs> and 
she couldn't press it. <sighs> I mean, who would has that not happened to? Your bag of cocaine slips under your brake pedal. You can't press yeah, the brake. We've, we've all been there. Around the we've all been there. We've all. Um, we had another one, and this made national news this week. This this was. This was where the really real world starts crossing over into my territory, and it shouldn't. Because people this stupid should not be involved with things this important. Speaking of which, did you know The Daily Show was ripping us off? How so? The Daily Show did what they call the American Awards. And they gave awards to stupid people doing stupid shit. You have to look up the segment. They're totally ripping us off, and I think we should sue them. Or start awards of our own. Eh. Fuck them. I've been doing it longer. I'll be doing it after they're done. You know, but we could make millions. Well, we're in Daily Show territory tonight. That's for damn sure. Pentagon. No Texas takeover plot. I saw this. Amid unfounded internet fuel rumors that U.S. Special Operation Forces might be trying to take over parts of the Southwest, Texas Governor Greg Abbott ordered Texas State Guard forces under his control to keep an eye on the U.S. military during a large upcoming training exercise. Did you hear about this, Dan? <laughs> Dan used to be in the Army, so... Abbott says, it is important that Texans know their safety, constitutional rights, private property rights, and civil liberties will not be infringed. I mean, any more than they already were, because you live in Texas. Yeah. I just, I, I it's, it's, <sighs> Does stand your ground count if it's the army? No, 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 it doesn't. Well, stand your ground, shoot a general and get away with it? This was one of the. He okay. says no, to stay shoot back, which I suppose is a salient point. What happened here is a bunch of these nutcase middle. And I say nutcase. I don't say it lightly. These nutcase militia people who are like, I, and you know what I blame it on? Fucking X Files for making this so. Pr I hate saying it, but do you remember the X Files movie where they they're like FEMA? FEMA is the key of it all. It gives the yes. president. Do you watch the videos about the death camps? Yeah. That FEMA's building death camps and yeah. stockpiling plastic coffins they're all going to put us in in about five years? Yes. It's This all started, now. it was probably a conspiracy theory before, but this all started with this idea that FEMA can supersede national law when an emergency is declared and can do whatever the fuck they want. And it's a secret plot. FEMA's going to... To take over, the president's going to use FEMA to take over the world. Now, in the X Files, it had to do with doing this for aliens. Right. Here, I think it has to do with with brown people. Well, no, it's there's this. I guess the military has been planning this major training exercise for months now, called what Jade Helm, Jade Helm fifteen. And it's basically a giant training exercise that's going to take place over a large chunk of the Southwest. In it's kind of a war game in preparation for invasion from a land invasion from Mexico. Which Dan, my military expert, tells me they do stuff like this all the time. They run scenarios. Now that's kind know? of silly, right there. A land well, invasion. Well, be prepared for fucking anything. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Right. So they run war games and scenarios like this. So like I saw something about it. And I'm like, is this a thing? And he's like, no, I did crap like this all the time in the military. It's called being prepared for shit. You run these scenarios. And so it's really happening. The Internet decided that actually the American military is going to. I don't know. Seize Texas? I mean, America already owns Texas, so I don't know what they think is going to happen. Like, why would America invade America? But the, I don't really know what they think is going to happen, but they think that the that the American military is going to have a large scale incursion upon Texas. But the best part here is the best part here is the Internet went crazy and the governor of Texas went, my God, you're right. Yeah. Fuck you, army. Fuck you. You don't get to take Texas. FEMA, bees, alien virus. Fuck you. 
Texas just isn't like the rest of us. The governor of Texas is is for no reason. This isn't like, you know, the fucking Civil War where where we actually had. I wanted to secede. I was kind of like, you know, maybe you guys just should. Yeah, you know, take a little time apart. See what happens. Yeah. See other countries. Something, you know. Maybe, yeah, maybe you guys should just, it's not us, it's you. This is, I mean, this is, this, this would, if I lived in Texas, this would scare the shit out of me. Because the guy who has control over the Texas budget, the Texas National Armed Forces, pretty much a very powerful person in a very the big... National Guard against the American military. The guy running the, running the state I live in is out of his fucking mind. I would be a little worried. Also, I would be fucking with him. I would be typing up all sorts of crazy internet rumors and seeing if he bought them. See if you can make him believe Paul McCartney's dead. Yes. <laughs> Just every fucking urban legend. Do you know, you know the one about Denver International Airport, right? No. The Denver International Airport is actually a giant cover for a secret underground bunker where the elite Illuminati will live after, after the great whatever that will kill us all get on his twitter get on his twitter and tell him tell him there's a whole like that's it's a thing because there's all kinds of weird fucking art in the denver international airport like that horse with the big red eye and giant yes like there's weird shit in the denver international airport and it's kind of in the middle of nowhere and yeah the i've been there way too long and the the terminals form a swastika from the aerial view and like, it's, it's a lot of bad design decisions. So my but the conspiracy theory is that it sits atop a giant, like secret underground city that will, be housed by the, that will be people by the Illuminati elite when the rest of us plebs are fucking dead. People, if you're watching this, get on Twitter and, and alert Governor Abbott immediately. Well, that's in Colorado. He has no power over Colorado. It doesn't matter. He needs to fight for it because it's close. It's close. Fuck those Illuminati. Come on, Abbott, stand up for America. You can do it. I, I believe in you. America. What? Stand up for America. America. I believe in you. The thing of it is, like, I don't know if you saw the White House Correspondents' Dinner, but it was more obvious than ever at the White House Correspondents' Dinner that Barack Obama has no fucks left. Like, he just doesn't give a fuck anymore. He's like, you know what? You guys have been dicks to me for six years. I don't got to run for re-election. Let's do this. So I feel like somewhere Barack Obama is like, no, seriously, just let me invade Texas. Just for a day. Just for just for funsies. I'm actually waiting for just him to invade fucking Texas. I'm actually waiting for him to get out of office when he can start saying whatever the fuck he wants to again. Oh, that the post presidency book is gonna Oh yes. Let me tell y'all what a dick John Boehner really is. Like we didn't know. Um so we have some more stuff. And hey, video game stuff. Oh, God. Oh, God. Um, Steam has uh, what they know, is, what's known as their green light program, where they allow um, people to test new games and see if they're viable and get people to purchase them there. <sighs> this is both the most appalling and weirdest thing I have seen go through Steam green light. And the headline should give you an idea of how strange everything is. Failed Christian shoe promoter makes anti-gay first-person shooter. What are Christian shoes? That's a good question. Bef maybe can you walk on water? Am I wearing the wrong shoes to get into heaven? I don't know. Am I going to hell because I shop at Payless? Before its removal from Greenlight, um... I don't know why that's what I latched onto, but what the fuck is a Christian shoe? I don't know. Uh, it was revealed a crude game that has players aim a bullseye to shoot and kill, pe kill people who say such things as, quote, can I put my wiener in your butt? And quote, whoops, I just dropped the soap. Because as you know, that's... the way you can tell people are gay is because they will walk up to you unbidden 
and ask if they can put their wiener in your butt. Can I put my that wiener is, in your butt? That is no? the common okay. parlance among the gays. The game makes very clear that its goal is to shoot and kill homosexuals with liberal use of its pejorative F word in the game's title. And I don't want to read the title. That's how bad the title of this game is. I don't want to read this title. I'm not gonna. If you want, if you want to find it, figure it out yourself. Cause I ain't gonna read it. Um, players get points for killing gay people, more points if the person killed is transgender, and they lose points for any straight people they kill. It's hard, to make, it's hard to make a judgment call about the most offensive thing in this game, but we were particularly disturbed to hear the game's announcer celebrate a kill by saying, quote, AIDS carrier eliminated. Apparently, Christian footwear is the teachings of Jesus Christ through quality footwear. Which is interesting, because Jesus didn't have quality footwear. No, he didn't! He had, like, fuck old ratty-ass sandals. They were probably no. Joseph's sandals. I mean, it's been a long time since catechism, but I'm pretty sure Jesus was anti-shooting people. They didn't have guns back then, which I know is, you know, for all you in Texas, in fact, there were no guns in the Bible. I don't understand how it... How is that Christian shooting people? An email no, to Ars Technica. It's like number three. He, okay, listen to this. He called the game development industry, quote, overly sensitive and easily offended because they pulled this down within two hours. Well, yeah. I mean, overly sensitive. The game industry is overly sensitive, but it's not like he's a woman, so I don't know what his complaint is. <laughs> that seems to be their major sensitivity is vaginas. Oh, my God. Yeah, apparently, uh, a Devoter Footwear was a Kickstarter campaign he created for Christian Shoes that was... I don't know what that means! I don't know either! Like, do they leave little scripture footprints? Something like that, I don't I know. Be interesting, if they left little scripture passages as footprints. <sighs> I don't understand how it's Christian to shoot people or to fantasize about shooting people. Or a specific type of people. Any people at all. But the, no, but wanting to kill people. Not Christian. That's, that's bad. One of the big 10 guys. You don't get to kill people. God doesn't like it. Done. But to compound that with, no, no, just this specific certain type of people. Just let's just eliminate this entire race because they're not the right race. They're not. What's a good way of p putting it? Um, they're not the master race. So let's just get rid of that race and everything will be better. I don't know if we need to go all Godwin's law up in here. I think we do. I don't think we do. The teachings of Jesus Christ through quality footwear. <laughs> It's the dumbest fucking business model I've ever heard. <laughs> <sighs> oh, let's let, let's just get back to plain old stupid and and, and not just revolting. But... Now I'm mad. Well, I'll Jesus give you. Jesus doesn't want you to shoot anybody. Let's just be clear about that. No. No. If you're if you're shooting people for Jesus, Jesus thinks you're an asshole. Yes. Let's get Unless something. Jesus is your mob leader or something. Well, there were there were a bunch of uh, protests, obviously, this last week regarding Baltimore, regarding the, the Freddie Gray incident and everything. And I applaud the people who went out and, and did something about it. However, I don't exactly know what this guy was trying to do. Shirtless man gets stuck upside down on a basketball hoop, prompting rescue. A hammer-wielding man needed to be rescued by firefighters and police on Friday after he climbed up into a basketball hoop at a Seattle area park and somehow got stuck upside down. 
Hanging by this is what happens when you tell Thor that white men can't jump. <laughs> Uh, hanging by a foot, the shirtless man was flailing and thrashing about as a dozen officers stood around the court, apparently trying to figure out how to get him down. At one point, the man appeared to have his head stuck in the rim as he tried to free himself. Eventually, firefighters used a ladder to cut the net and get him down to safety. Now, this apparently was started off just before all of these protests were going on in Seattle, and the cops were like, Okay, we get you're mad at us, but what? I want to know, why were they confused about how to get him down? That doesn't seem that hard. Well, the firefighters actually got him down, not the police. So yeah. that says something. Cut. Who? Cool. Last line of... The last line of the story is, it was not immediately clear why the man had climbed up onto the hoop. No, no, it really wasn't. I believe I can fly. No. I believe I can touch the That's sky. not how that works. Let's, oh, there's, is there video? Let's see, is, is there video? Oh, here we go. There's video of the incident. Look at this idiot. What are you doing? And the cops are pretty much just sort of like, well, what the fuck do we do now? Oh, what the? The cops are just like, I don't know, what the fuck do we do now? My give up. And they cut him down. There he goes. What the, what is the, what the fuck happened there? How long was he up there for? Doesn't say. Oh God, that, I, the fact, the fact that he was just sort of like kicking and flailing around and shit. Imagine that headache from your blood rushing your head for that long. Oh. Uh. Ugh. Well, the fact that he was just, like, kicking and flailing around with a hammer and shit. Why did he have a hammer? That is... What? what? You I can't think, dump a hammer. No, I think there's a fundamental misunderstanding of, of the basics of, of basketball at play here. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> Uh, our last one tonight is a road rage story. Thankfully, nobody got hurt. But this is just normally, okay, we've, we've been dealing with these sort of road rage stories for decades now. This whole bit about people cutting each other off in traffic and getting angry and somebody just up and shoots somebody. Yeah. Well, in this case, no one got shot because there was no gun involved. I there like stories. There's no gun involved. Oh. There was a sword. Oh. Well. Bad case, okay. of road, bad case of road rage leads to sword fight. Austin police have arrested a man following a severe case of alleged road rage. Uh, Kaya Pe Oh, God, I can't say it. Can you say yeah. it? Yeah. Akavan. Akavan. Thank you. You're so much better at that than I am. 34-year-old Austin man is accused of attacking another man with a sword and a homemade flail. Okay. According to the affidavit. From your lark. According to the affidavit. According to the affidavit, uh, Paya Akavan was driving recklessly. Witness said he passed another car by driving the uncovered lane. The driver of the other car was upset by the reckless driving. The intersection, he took a picture of Paya Akavan's car and license plate where the two drivers exchanged heated words. Victim told police Paya Akavan showed, followed him a short distance and the two men pulled over. Witness said he got out of his car. Paya Akavan yelled at him, threw a water bottle, and punched him in the face. Witness managed to break up the fight. Paya Akavan left and the victim got back in his car, drove home, pulled in his driveway. But no, that's not the end of it. Paya Akavan returned a short while later parked his car behind the man's vehicle, blocked him in the driveway. He walked up to the driver's side of the car and began slashing at it with a sword. The man backed into the other car to get away, and Paya Akvin got in his car and left. He wasn't gone long, though. Jesus Christ. Paya Akvin came back to the home again and attempted to run him over. When that didn't work, Paya Akvin walked up to the man on foot, 
threatening him with a thick stick with two socket wrenches hanging off the top from ropes. So you got another fight, and when the neighbors started walking by, Paya Akavin left again. What in the fuck? Now here's the thing. A thick stick with two socket wrenches hanging off the top from ropes. Is that the sort of thing you were already carrying around? It's you go home and make it. And which one is worse? Ex fucking exactly. Fuck, you just carry this shit around in your fucking car. I had friends in college who carried swords around in their cars because they weren't allowed to keep them in the dorms. And, you know, I hang out, I hung out with the gamer crowd. So, like, my friend Nathan in his car had a four foot claymore in the trunk, I think a katana, a machete, and then, like, throwing knives in the glove compartment. And he wound up getting arrested because he got pulled over one night with all that shit in his car. But he wasn't allowed to keep it in the dorms. I don't know why he couldn't just leave it at home. Well, did he but... use them on anybody as a thing? No, no. He never... There you go. Sword on anybody. I mean, for... He never went all fucking Connor McCloud on somebody. And then, I mean, this, okay. For what happened... He, and let's let's not forget the guy with the sword was the guy who was driving badly. Another person took it upon himself to take a picture of his license plate, and that apparently was was the motivation and the rationalization for all this other shit. Yeah, that that re that warranted this response. Not once, not twice, not three times, but four times, came back at this guy. Home. Followed his ass home. I mean, for fuck's sake. Yeah, that's a special kind of crazy. It's GTA Highlander. And I mean, the thing is, like, don't attack a car with a sword. Yeah, I don't I don't think swords are are very effective for dealing most, most of your handheld melee weapons not super effective against a car. No. No. <laughs> I like how you look at Dan is like, are no, no, they're not. <laughs> I look over for verification because I'm waiting for her to be like, actually. <laughs> So I, guess I have this specialized thing in the garage that will fuck up a car. Uh, I expect that of him. The, the, I guess the, the first thing we learned... The first thing we learned tonight is that sword versus car, car gonna win. Yeah. And Just, the re You know, it's not that fucking serious. The restraint on this guy. <laughs> Out with the Hitler. In with the Buddha. Out with the Hitler. <laughs> The next thing we learned is if, 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 okay, I guess we learned that basketball does not require a hammer. No. No, it does not. Basket does not. We also learned Jesus doesn't want you to shoot fucking anybody. No, no. Jesus doesn't want you to shoot people. What would Jesus do? Not shoot people. Yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah, that's, that's not... Oh, no, 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 no. We've learned that if you live in Texas, you know all those Nigerian emails, the Nigerian prince emails you got? Send, send those. Send them all to the governor. Send them all to the governor. Forward all that shit. All of it. He's going to have a press conference. I was just informed today that a Nigerian nobleman contacted the great state of Texas about our budget. We laugh, but there's gonna be a fucking land war in Texas. We're on the state, we're on the edge of like Civil War II because of this fucking moron. Because the army's gonna roll in to run their training exercise and the goddamn Texas National Guard is going to attack them. Yeah, but you say it as a war, it'd be more like a civil retreat. They're like, okay, oh, you guys are finally leaving? Okay, good. Take care. Do you need like, your email, you need your mail forwarded or stuff? We can check on the cat for you. It's totally cool. <laughs> no, we confiscate all cats. 
we've learned that uh, when you drive a bus, you have one job, and that job does not involve drinking. No. Or, or drugs. I mean, water. Stay hydrated. Well, yeah, water. Water's fine, but... Also, the only people who should be bringing, who are, you can expect to bring drugs on the bus are the kids on the bus. You're supposed to be better than that, bus driver. You're supposed to be better than that. Do we expect kids to bring drugs on the bus? I pretty much expect horrible things from all kids, yes. Mm, Okay. And finally tonight, we've learned that if you are trying to remain inconspicuous because you may have some other violations of of, uh, law on your, your driving record, probably the best way to do this is to not drive a shitmobile full of stuff. With, with no doors. With no doors. Maybe keep the doors on the car if we're trying to go under the radar. Yeah, you, you, you don't want to be calling the attention. Because fuck's sake. Also, it's more like that way. Tara, do you really think a guy who is tied a hazard <laughs> sign where his license plate should be gives a good goddamn just, about his mileage? Gas is expensive nowadays, and you don't want to waste gas on fucking wind resistance. I'm just being pragmatic. <laughs> Uh, could you look at that picture and say there's anything about that man that, that just gives off an air of pragmatism? Hey, he hung the hazard sign on it. 